Hey guys, I just want to give a brief overview with basically what's going on with the new map editor plugin. So just like before, this is multiplayer ready and all that kind of stuff. It's good to go there. But we also now have a brand new gizmo system that is using the interactive tools framework. So you have the same old rotation and translation that you would before along with all your snapping. You have a proper undo system and redo. And this works with multiple actors just like, well, it's supposed to basically have editor quality gizmos at your own disposal and same thing works with uh, multiple selections so you still have the undo and the redo anyways moving on to what we have on the right hand side oh by the way you can still switch between uh, the different types of gizmos and I'll be working on scale in the near future but to continue we have just an example panel built out of basically the same concepts that the previous one was just a lot cleaner so you have a drop down here, here we have our content browser. So we have different scope of sections this is just driven through a data table. And these are all driven through data assets. So for example, I can choose what I want to spawn. So in this case, let's say I want to spawn stairs and I'll, I'll put them right up against the, uh, the backside here. So I can click on the stairs and I go into the preview placement and then I can left click and it permanently spawns it. Now I have multiple functions to kind of dictate how you might actually want to handle the spawning. And I'll get to that here uh, by the end of the video. So you have that as a general spawning rule. And I'm, actually, I'll go ahead and show you. So we have a couple different ways to handle spawning. So for starters, when we left click and we actually try to access something. And in this case, we have find and grab. So when I click on an actor to drag it, that's from the find and grab because you're performing a trace from what's underneath your mouse. Then you have a couple different kind of things. So for example, if you are dragging a local actor, so that's what you saw here. So for example, if I spawn down a cube, I am dragging a local actor and when I left click, it places it. So that's what the logic is there. So this pre-placed or a place pre-placed actor is basically place your dragging actor. Now you have a couple different options for this. You have replicated and not replicated. So if I go ahead and do a client view, and I'll just show you as the uh, from the server side. So I drive a cube and you can see the server can still see my cube and so can all the other clients. Now, if you didn't want to have that, that's where you have basically the couple different uh, dragging and dropping options from which you can basically use it with. So if I load up a map item, here we have spawn actor and this one I have enabled pre-place. So if I disable that, it will not give me the pre-place option and instead it will spawn it at this transform. And if I want to switch to do it all locally, I can do spawn actor local pre-place. And this will do the same thing, but it will not replicate. And this goes for the server as well. So it won't have to worry about not replicating for the server. So the server, all the clients, they see nothing. But if I left click, here we have an actual actor that spawns up that anyone can interact with. And moving on from there, I'm going to go ahead and revert that back. We have some more panels. So continuing on to the right hand side, here we have the uh, details panel, which again, still a work in progress, but it's basically here I have my location and rotation that I can control from the actors. And this also works for, again, multiple selections. So you can see I'll select these three and I'll bump it up to, let's say, uh, we'll do 200. It'll bring all the actors up. And I can just reset it back down to zero and then back to the, what is like 93 or something that they were at. I don't remember what they were. And same thing goes with the rotation. So I'll go ahead and pivot these by 90. And here we have them all pivoting around the origin point here of the gizmo at 90. And I'll just undo all that. So moving on beyond there, here we have the actual tools. So again, as I create more stuff, this gets filled out even more. So here we have some basic snapping control. So by default, we have it set to snapping for location and rotation. And these are all in the increments of 10. So if I bump this up to, let's say 50, I'm now snapping at 50 and I can undo location snapping as well. And we all I can select it and everything just works as the same without any of the snapping. Same thing goes with rotation. I disable the snapping. We have free rotation. If I re-enable it, it'll go back down to whatever value you have set. 
Oops, didn't mean to close out of it. Okay. Moving on next, we also have the outliner. So I need to add a little tag here to kind of show what it is, but currently I have nothing because I have spawned nothing. So each client that creates an actor or object or anything really around the world, they have their own list of stuff they, well, stuff they've placed. So for example, while these are all editable, I don't have really access to them in terms of ownership. So if I create one, which is another feature I can show you here, if I just alt and left click to drag like you would in the editor, you can see I now have a cube. Same thing, I can do the stairs. I'll do the this bump here, so on and so on. And I can go through and I can click and select, you know, whichever ones I really want. So for instance, I don't want the bump anymore. I'll just click on the bump, delete it, get out of my list. And then moving on again, here we have the same kind of style. This was the previous like saving system. So here I just have this set up. I'll go ahead and save the map and I'll relaunch. Go ahead and load the map, map one and load. And here we have, you know, again, just the, uh, well, map loading. I don't really know what else to call it there, but we have some defaults that you can set as well. This is gonna, again, change over time, but the things have been simplified. There's no dedicated gizmo actor. There's no annoying trace channels you really have to tinker with, but basically you can set it to where anything that is set to block this trace collision channel is what you can select and interact with. Then you have your default snapping settings. So 10, 10, and enabled for both rotation and translation. You have your max select distance. So how far away do you want to be able to select? Then we have our replication delay. So this is kind of dependent on clients to how often you want what they're dragging around to replicate. So for reference, if I go ahead and play with two clients, or I guess client and server, and I'll drag this cube around. You can see on the server, it's got a little bit of stutter to it. That's because it's updating every 0.1 seconds. If I drop this down to what I set as the minimum, you will see here, it updates a lot more smoothly. So again, it's just kind of up to you and what you need. Uh, you could ignore that for the time being. And we also have some basic deletion checks. So for example, here I'll play as the client. So let's say server places down a staircase right here. All right, the client goes to click it. Client tries to delete it. Client cannot delete it. However, the server can. So same thing goes with anything that's already placed. So basically, it's have kind of an ownership thing. So I placed down this cube here. Well, that's a neat bug. I select it and I can delete it because I am the owner of it. So that's based upon, a, again, this is all optional stuff. I'm trying to make this as flexible as possible. If I can find where it has to delete. So delete only owned. So if you disable this, we now no longer have the ability to, well, we have the ability to basically delete everything. So I can select this cube, delete. I can select the bump, arm, and uh, whatever that is, and delete. And I think I have the packet lag up. Yeah, I do. That would be explaining some of the latency. So this should be a lot smoother now. Oh yeah. Still have that weird bug, so I have to figure that out. But you have uh, multiple selection control. You have, oh yeah, that's right, copy and pasting. So for example, I'm just going to start playing with one client now. We can duplicate. So I select that guy, that guy, and the bump. I'll hold down Alt and left click. I can duplicate my selection. I can select that and that, Control C, Control V, and it now duplicates just like in the editor where it positions it at the exact same location. And there's also the option there for the pasting to paste at the copied location. That's what you just saw. So if I uncheck that, I'm gonna go ahead and re-enable that. So if I uncheck paste at copied location, it allows me to really kind of paste anywhere. So I'll select these four here, and I'll just paste them right here. And there we have it. So I'll go through and I'll paste them as far against the wall as I can. There we go. And it, well, it pasted them all in. And it's all kind of based upon that initial uh, selection. 
let's see. I'm trying to see if there's really anything else that's, I guess, new or interesting. I don't... Oh, yeah. You got, we have different types of coordinate systems. So before, we only had the world. Now we can have local as well. So if I press Z, I am now in local mode. So you can see the gizmo rotates and everything with it. So I'll adjust it like that. We'll get access to the translation and the orientation of the local space of the object. And same thing, I can switch back to the normal. Uh, we have highlighting. I just went ahead and bound that to a key for reference. So I can select all these guys. And as you can see, the highlight, if I press X, we disable the highlighting of the selection. Uh, it's just one of those optional features again. And setting of the gizmo types. And shift less mouse button was... All right, that's for appending a selection. Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, mostly been going through and trying to make this as user-friendly and as flexible as possible because I want to build a... I don't want what is up on the marketplace to be what you see in a game that's using this. I want this to be fully customizable to where it's not even recognizable of what was on the marketplace. And that can be done very easily, again, just through the UI alone. But also I want to have the flexibility so it's not always the exact same feature set. I want to be able to support, you know, multiple things. Just like before, the dragging and dropping feature. That never existed. That had to be implemented by the end user. Now it's supported by default. And if you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. You can use really whatever you want. If you want to go back to the old system where, you know, you just selected your object and... Let's say you're looking right there. That's where it would spawn it. You can go right ahead and do so. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the time being. I'm still working on this, and I'm not sure when it'll be up on the marketplace, but at the rate that Epic is going with the whole uh, reviews and comments, or reviews and questions being removed and replaced with a new system and all that other crap, that I'm sure they're gonna heavily restrict and screw us that are people that are trying to actually sell stuff. It might end up being on somewhere else like Gumroad. But anyways, we'll just have to see and see how badly they actually screw up. So I'll see you in the next video.